Welcome to Switch Corner, my name is Alex and today we're taking a look at Young Souls on the Nintendo Switch. The latest beat em up from the arcade crew, a part of that emu of Streets of Rage fame. Is it worth your cash and how does its RPG elements play out? Well hit subscribe, join us here on Switch Corner for reviews and deals near daily and let's get started. Opening the game, we are introduced to a brother and sister combo, Tristan and Jen. Young, they pack attitude, and they generally seem to have a let's push back against society vibe about them. Quickly though, we also learn they are adopted. You live with a professor. You have done now for some 12 months, and you live in a bit of an epic mansion style location. Your life though it seems to revolve around skipping school and running errands on the professor's part. That professor is desperately seeking to be a father figure to you both. After a quick trip around town though on his behalf, you come home, the house is in a disarray and the professor now missing. You head down to the basement, his work location, something that's normally out of bounds, to find a magical gate. This, it transports you to what is an underground location, and in this world, you discover goblins exist. These goblins, not happy with the humans, they intend to actually invade your town, and the professor has been trying to make peace. Now they have him working, locked up, all towards their plan. Go beat down on some foes, save the professor, and save the day alongside what is a relatively large cast. It's good stuff, packs a whole lot more heart than I expected, and it's continually moving the story forward with dialogue exchanges and cutscenes. Young Souls then is a unique hybrid of experiences. I anticipated a standard beat em up having not done my research. What I actually found was a combination of beat em up with dungeon crawling RPG. The idea is simple though, progress through a number of locations, collect up tablets, these will power the gate back at home to new locations. These dungeons though, they have branching pathways, multiple boss moments, and even challenge rooms. Challenges, think survive a number of waves or earn a specific weapon. The combat then fast and fluid and I was really impressed with its balance. This is not just a basic setup of light and heavy attack, but rather you have a standard attack, you can charge it. Then you'll be able to use things like special moves, jumps, grabs and dodge rolls. Those dodges, they provide invincibility frames. A core mechanic then on top of all of this, you can block, but more importantly, time it right and you can parry your enemies, stunning them in the process, or at least whittling down a parry meter in boss moments that will actually give you the advantage. It's surprisingly strategic and what makes it even deeper, all of the systems around it. You see here we have a stamina bar that's actually tied to the dodge roll and not attacks limiting your use though before a recharge, meaning it's gotta be timed just right. We have mana for specials, we have items like bombs and bow and arrows, and we can even then change and upgrade equipment. Throughout the journey, you'll not only find new weapons then, but you can buy them as well and upgrade them at certain locations. Equipment then, that's gonna be a main weapon, an item, shoes which add buffers, armor, helmet, and shield. This all even plays into character weight, impacting your speed. I went in with a combo of Tristan was slow but powerful, Jen was fast but weak, and that was a fantastic team to have because Jen could attack things in mid-air, particularly useful against, you know, flying enemies. In single player, you tap the left trigger to switch, or you can play local co-op as well. It is a shame at this point they don't have online play though, I think that would have been a huge benefit. Enemy variety then here is huge as well, they have interesting combat patterns and boss moments, they are mostly epic in scale at least as they fill the screen, and they are definitely good at what they do when it comes to kicking your ass. This is rarely a game of getting as close as possible and just simply button mash, instead it's focusing on demanding strategy and levelling up both your character and your equipment. Outside of the dungeons then, this is where we grow and develop our characters and push the narrative forward further. We have our bedroom here, we sleep to level up, increasing three areas, that's strength, resistance and speed. Then we can go even further with that downtown. You'll even actually unlock a moped for that exploration, and that's good fun considering it's built on a 2D style, it's just, I don't know, it feels very fast. 
When you go downtown though, you get a few more options, a gym with mini games where you can focus on one of your attributes, even if the mini games for each of the three, it's repetitive and simply a button masher. There's a store to trading goods for cash, the mayor who is helping you on your mission by powering the gate with new tablets that you find. There's a store for simple cosmetics, clothing, and then maybe most importantly, you've got Goblin Alley. You see on this journey, the town that you first arrive in, in the Goblin world, it was attacked, it's on fire, and they've jailed many of the citizens. So what you do is you free them from jail and they end up here at Goblin Alley to support you. Think of it as almost a market and you can buy here new or upgraded weapons items you can get a selection of other areas as well it's also a nice visual reflection of your progression on this journey all these mechanics so they build towards something that feels a lot bigger than a traditional beat-em-up and all in all i spent around 10 hours getting through the story with the occasional moment where i had to grind and revisit past levels to level up you know just get ready for that next dungeon where i was currently getting crushed there's also the branching pathways and some they will open up later in the game for you it also then packs multiple difficulty options for that replayability and while it's not an easy game to begin with there's a ton of accessibility options where you can impact how the game works you know the amount of damage taken or the number of lives so if you are worried about that difficulty curve do not worry this game has you covered problems i honestly really enjoyed my time with this one but i do think even with fast travel some of the back and the forth between town and home towards the end game felt a little bit too much sure it's getting you there quicker with fast travel but you're still going to be sitting, you know, through a load screen. Then I did notice some weird freezes, mainly pressing the minus button to access equipment in a dungeon. The first time I actually thought the game had crashed because it kind of just stuck on a screen for a few seconds. The other issue with the game's running at 30 frames per second, not ideal for a beat em up, but during some encounters where the enemy count got a little bit, let's say, overwhelming, it does drop. I wouldn't call it awful, but I would say you stick this on the hardest difficulty and it may feel like the game is a little unfair at that point with its responsiveness. That all I said though, I really had a great time with it and the gameplay had me locked in from beginning to end. I know I liked it too because Codes only came out a few hours before release yesterday and I managed it in a couple of sittings, something I rarely do. Graphically then, I think it's stunning. It's got this almost 2D comic book style, but it's very much a 3D world with 360 degree movement. The animation then takes it even further with countless enemies and attack styles. I particularly enjoyed the weapons. It just kind of changes our character's stance and you can see the extra weight they are now working with. While it very much has that dungeon look as well, given the setting, I think they did a nice job here of adding variety from rain to snow to lava. The cutscenes as well are somewhat cinematic in their design, but they keep the pace going. Very few issues, it felt like the resolution had a slight drop at a few select moments, no doubt to support that frame rate, and then I had a bit of clipping, but overall just super stylistic. Audio finally, and it does a decent job. It's got a playerful soundtrack that jumps between something more light-hearted, like I almost heard a Home Alone-esque kind of vibe to it when we're exploring, to the reflection of danger in dungeons. It all builds into that cartoon style. Then sound effects, we get weapons and some environmental pieces, as well as some enemies. I think they did enough with sound effects. It's a shame it's not voice acted though. I think it really would have put a bow on what is an exceptional presentation. So the final verdict, and I'm a big fan of beat em ups and I've really enjoyed this spin on the formula, adding that character build, more strategy, and then a town to explore. A few of these areas, sure, a little repetitive at times, but I'd say the risk has absolutely paid off. It's just a refreshing spin on a genre that's been around now for years. It has problems though, as I said, a few quirks here and there occasionally, and a frame rate that stumbles in a few select scenes. But I got through it, and honestly, I enjoyed every minute. The story is engaging, the characters and world entertaining, and that combat absolutely satisfying. With that in mind, a great 8 out of 10 from me today, and hopefully this is not the last we see of Tristan and Jem, because I think this, it's absolutely a winning formula. Will you be adding this one to the library then, or are you holding onto that cash? A shout out then to the patrons of the channel, who are going above and beyond to support Switch Corner, it helps more than you know, so thank you all so much. Then hit subscribe if you love the Switch, as much as we will do here, join our growing family, and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.